Welcome to the Billiard Network, the home of Global Pool on YouTube. Like and follow if you enjoy this. Our match today is Thorsten Holman from Germany versus Nils Feyen from Holland. We're playing nine ball, race to nine, alternate break. Three object balls must go past the head string for a legal break. The nine balls are racked on the spot. Three consecutive fouls by the same players lost the game. I'm Earl Strickland for the Billiard Network. Nils Fan shooting left top. Oh, he misses it. He's going to get right on the four. That still would have been tricky to the five. But he left the shot for Thorsten. I know both these games, these guys' games quite well. Uh, I've played them enough, I should know, and watched them play. Two really strong players. Really, uh, uh, Holman's won a, the straight pool title a couple of times. That's impressive. I think uh, Nils is a good straight pool player, too. I don't know if what he can do here, just try to go around the table or just stay right there and take a long shot on the floor and uh, hope the cue ball sticks right there. And that's what he's going to do. I always hate this shot. I don't know why I never make it. It seems like to me I'm going to scratch. This one's not going to scratch. You can clearly see the points there protecting it. If it was a little bit further back this way, he, he probably couldn't shoot at it from this angle. He'll just roll it in, maybe with a little bit of left. Or he's going to try some kind of safety. I don't know. He seems to be looking at something else. I thought he would just roll it in, and the cue ball would stick right there and make the ball. Like I said, I always struggle in this shot myself. That's the way I hit it, like that, a lot. I don't know if he left the shot or not. I think he about have got lucky. This ball may be hard to pocket in the cut in the side, but maybe he can make it. He's looking at it like he can now. This is not the clearest uh, picture either. It's like film is a little blurry. It looks like to me he can just shave it in with a lot of spin, maybe. If he can't, it's going to be a tricky shot to even play safe on me. I think he can make it though. He's just going to put a lot of right on it and just trim it in there like that. That helped him make that ball was all that right he put on it. If he wouldn't have put all the spin on it, he probably couldn't have cut it in as easily. He's got a little bit of angle. He he can shoot straight ball and just go two rails and get on the six for the side pocket. That's the prudent play. Now he may try something else. I don't know. Talk to me, he could just roll it. Two rails. Come back for the side. He spun it around. That's a good shot too. That was the right shot. I couldn't tell from this angle if he could actually do that. He actually couldn't go to the bottom rail. He had to do that. So that was the right shot. Now he'll just draw over with left bottom between the nine and the seven ball. Spin off the bottom rail a little bit. Just draw it like that. Just bounce off just a little. That's just enough. That's all he needed. He liked a little more, but he's still okay. Now he could draw back into the nine here or go two rails out in the middle of the table. I think he'll go two rails out in the middle of the table like that. Yeah, he underhit it a little bit, I'll tell you that, for my liking. But I think he got there. The table appears to be a little slow. He'll draw back or he'll draw over and hit the rail and shoot the nine in this pocket. But this is a one angle. Uh, just stun forward on the nine. One nothing, Nils fan leads. Looks like it's a one angle uh, camera, so I'm not gonna get many other looks at it. We put left bottom, draw the ball to the side rail, try to get the one on the side, and then try to get something else in. Maybe the corner ball might kiss him or go straight in. It went straight in. I don't know how they do that. They never can do that right there make that ball straight in with the nine on the spot. 
almost like uh, an illusion. Don't, because they can't do that, really, realistically. And the ball should hit by the diamond. Well, let's see, he made two, and he got one back, so it's a legal break, but it doesn't do him, it's not much consolation because he's snookered, you don't have to roll out, I think. And it's a tough rollout, kind of. Because it's hard to play safe once you roll out on this shot. Where the three ball is, it's in a precarious position. But I just finished playing tennis, and I seem to be uh, sharp enough to do this, I guess, right now. Sometimes I'm too tired, and sometimes I'm sharp as a tack. Tennis, what a great game. That is a great game. Love going out and just hitting top spin shots and slices. And my girlfriend, she's gotten really good. She's starting to beat me in the rallies. Can't even believe how good she's gotten. But it's pull now. But there's no difference in the games. People don't realize that. They're all the same, tennis, golf, and pull. All three are the same. Don't ever forget it. He's just going to bank this and put a little bit of left on it. see what he's up to here and bank it over around the five ball. He's going to try to use the five, the seven, as his blocker. He'll try to fit it over here on the rail with the nine ball somehow. I think he can do that, it looks like. He'll hit it with kind of medium, slow speed. Or he could go for the shot. It does go. He can try to be a hero, too, but I don't believe he'll do that. I think he'll just roll it with top, like I said, and bank it to the bottom row. Try to come around the five. Like that. If it gets to the side rail, it's not a bad shot. And that's, yeah, maybe he can. He should have put a little left on that, but it may have scratched. I don't know. It was sitting kind of funny. It's still left in a tough position. It's like he's going to put right and come out real slow, maybe. Yeah, I knew that was always going to be a hard shot to, to uh, even pocket the ball if he puts outside spin on it. And what was wrong with that shot, the cue ball was close to the rail. And it, makes, it magnifies that shot that Thorsten had when the cue ball is close to the rail. On that particular shot, it's hard to really spin the ball and do anything with the cue ball. I guess he'll draw to the side rail and come back out with the right bottom one. Yeah, like that. That was the right way to play that. I'll put right top and go two rails. He should. These guys don't like playing the shots the way I do a lot of times because you have to, I play to spin the ball a little bit more. And that maybe they don't want to take that on. Or he'll draw back or stun two rails with the real right. That's what he's doing. He's kind of half stunning it two rails. See, it's held just a little bit. He held the ball just a little bit. That's a shot you guys got to learn, the amateurs out there, weekend players. That's a shot you got to learn right there, a the little stun and then release. He'll put some right top just to make sure it checks and stays away from that seven, like that. And he'll stop right there. It gives him a perfect angle on the seven just to stop. Now he'll draw down the middle of the table. He'll stun over. He won't go too far. He wants to keep that little angle going the other way so he can protect himself on three rails or whatever on the, or one rail draw off the eight like this. See, he didn't go too far. He didn't try to get perfect and draw back over. He's gonna use the rails with left bottom and just stun back over. He hit that a little bit weak, but he's all right. A little bit of right bottom and just Stick the cue ball right there. He'll just cinch the ball. Good shot. 2-0. Nils fan leads.
Thorsten to break left side, left bottom. He lost his cue ball a little bit. And usually you don't get a shot when you lose the cue ball down table like that, but he has he has a little bit of a look at something here. He can cut it in the side pocket, but it's gonna run into too much traffic. Five and a nine, the five and the eight. So he's gotta shoot it in the corner. This is a shot either you can roll it in or you jack up and you pop, fire it in. Or half, kind of pop it and fire it in. That's what he looks like he's gonna do, kind of stun like pop it. That's a good way to shoot it. I like shooting it like that. Very good. He showed what a seasoned player he is on that shot. Because it's a certain way to shoot that shot. And I'll just draw in the line, bump at the right bottom. Ooh, he missed it. Oh, he didn't have to. I thought he had to. That was better, though. Now he'll just draw back, or he'll use the rail again. Yep, he used the rail, with right, left, bottom. Stunned off. Now he'll draw back just a little bit, or a lot, and hit the rail. He may draw back and hit the rail, or just draw back a little bit. Yep, he drew back and hit the rail. Good shot. Got to be careful. These rails will get you in spots. He could have just drew back a little and gotten the same result there. Now he'll draw back or follow two rails. Follow two rails. He'll stun this around the nine, underneath it with a little bit of right. Just want to hit this just below center and put, put a little spin on it, quite a bit of spin. And just pop it a little and it'll go right around the nine, right down there for the eight. He underhit it though a little. Wow. He didn't put enough spin on it. He should have uh, enforced just a little more spin on that shot. This is the Billiard Network, the home of Global Pool on YouTube. Like and follow if you enjoy this. I'm Earl Strickland for the Billiard Network. Straight top, he's gonna come straight down the table. Good shot, he's all right. I like the way these rails respond on a shot like that. See how the ball came off the rail nice? Bottom and just stop. Uh, all right, Thorsten's on the scoreboard. Fayan leads 2 1. Nils to break left side, left bottom, driving the cue ball to the side rail. The, the more spin you get on this break, these, this break they use is the, what gets them in. You, the more spin you get on the cue ball, so just remember that. That's what will generate getting them in the pocket. If you just hit a little bit of spin, it might not work as well as hitting maybe two tips of spin. And that may be exaggerated a little bit. But you do have to exaggerate your spin on that break to uh, get a little better result like these pros are getting. Kind of let that out of the bag. But my break sucks anyway, so what good is it doing me? Nah. I've been experimenting with the break, and I, I think the more I spin the ball myself, even from the middle of the table when they won't go, like if I'm breaking eight ball and, the, and I can't make anything on the break, if I start putting a lot of spin on the ball and hit them real hard and kill the cue ball right in the middle of the table with spin, I might make one. So he's going to play safe somehow. He's going to bank the two ball. I don't know what he's looking at. I thought he would just roll the cue ball on the eight. It's not that hard a shot, but if he doesn't get it, he might sell out. But it doesn't look like that hard a shot from here to roll the, just roll the two to the diamond there and roll the cue ball right on the eight ball, but it's a little bit further away to his liking. And what other options does he have? Bank, kind of half bank the two around the five, two rails, and send the cue ball to the bottom rail somehow. Like that. He might have got away with it. Nope. He wanted the cue ball to slide down more, but it did do that it kind of bit. This table doesn't seem as dry as some of the other ones I've seen. Uh, maybe this venue's a little more humid. Maybe we'll get some venues over there that do play a little bit more humid than others, I'm sure.
my table's playing like it, you're floating on the Amazon River. But that's the way I want it. I want it to play difficult because that's all you get in a tournament or creepy conditions. You don't ever get the good conditions in tournaments, except at the U.S. Open match room. He's going to bank this. He actually can make it, actually. I think. Maybe you can take a swing at it, just cut it in. The pockets are generous. He can hit just before the rail. He butchered that. He still made no. He tried to make that and he hit behind it. I've done that lately. And uh, Hoban's getting up there in age, so eyeballs might not be as good. Mine aren't, that's for sure. The lighting needs to be better as we go on and nothing's better. Everything's getting worse. A little dark on this table. Left bottom, he'll just draw back a lot or he'll draw back a little. I don't th or he doesn't have to do much, I don't think, because he's, yeah, he's got the three ball sitting right in the pocket. Like I said before, this table doesn't look as dry as some of the other ones, that's for sure. They say it's all new cloth, so I'm not going to say nothing about that. He's going to hit this hard and kind of whiffle the ball around or something. Yep, like that. He didn't want to stay right there. It was too risky. That was better to do that and whiffle back down here with this shot. This is a much better shot than being stuck on the bottom rail trying to roll that four on the side. So remember that shot he just shot right there. It looks kind of risky and stupid, but it's the prudent play. He would roll this in with some right top and go to the bottom rail and bounce off or just straight top. See how low he gets? It's real low. He didn't hit that one, that one very well. He uh, he kind of Brooklyn did. He didn't cut it enough. He, did, he hit it on the right side of that pocket instead of the left side. But he's still okay. But he's got to make another good shot. Here, I, I like following this two rails. Just, just barbecue it with no spin like. Let the ball flatten out. But a lot of guys are scared of this shot. I know Dills has got some big guns in this. He's got some big shots, just like that. That's what I said right there. Nice shot, Nils. He's, he can come with some shots, Nils. That's what I like about his game. He ain't afraid to shoot in spots. You know, he just showed it right there. Won the Whirlpool Masters a couple of years, a year and a half, a year and a half. I've been, the pandemic messed me up. I don't know how long it's been, but with all the big players there. I was there too, but I was no threat. He's gonna roll this somehow, it looks like. Good top. I like these ta this tables for rolling the ball, but he, he didn't do good there. He's, he's, that's death. That is death. He, ain't got, he can't make it either way, he can bank it. Can't pocket the ball in either one of these corners. But I do like these cushions for uh, following like that, because you don't, you can hit them nice and smooth and the rail helps you, the rail helps you a lot. Where a lot of tables now, the rails are, actually what's going on, the, these, the bed on these tables are pretty quick too, and that's helping the table play right. Usually what we're getting in the States is very slow bed and boingy rails. That's all I see and I can't play like that, so. I don't mind the table being boingy if it's dry. He's going to have to, like, I thought he could, like, kind of bank it back to the side and then use the nine somehow as a blocker. It's all he can do. Or try to make it. Just literally try to bank it in and make it and get some kind of safe with the nine using it when he draws over. But if he, draws, if he tries to bank it, I think he's going to leave a shot, try to make it. That wasn't bad at all. That was very good. And here you just kick the ball. You kick to the bottom rail. We talked about this shot. I've talked about it to you. 
You just hit a little bit above the equator, put a lot of spin on it, and shoot away from it and let it curve, and then let it kick the ball. And you might make it in the side. He may kick this ball straight in the side pocket, but he doesn't want to make it. He just wants to hit before the side, or maybe after it would be all right, and he can get safe too. And don't hit it too hard. See how he's sitting high on it with spin? Unless he's going for something else. Oh wow, he cut it in. Yeah, I don't know about that. that was the right shot. He had a good, he almost made it though. I thought he would have just kicked it and got safe. He could get safe real easy on it, kicking it, but he chose to go for it. Straight top, he'll bounce out, come down for the corner or the side, depending on what that, what that rail does. See, he was playing for either pocket then, you can believe me. He had no idea exactly where the ball was going to go, but he knew he got either one of those pockets. A little, a little bouncy, this table, over some of the other ones. Right bottom and draw it around. That's the safest way to shoot that. 3-1. Mills is winning, leading. Homan's breaking from the left side, left bottom, drawing the cue ball to the side rail. Doesn't want to lose his cue ball. He didn't lose it that time. But he got, he didn't even, he fouled the break. Holman not breaking them like he used to. He never was great at the cut break, and I, I'm not either. No, no uh, fan of it. I like hit, hitting the balls head on, hitting the pool balls head on. And uh, that was his strongest suit when he was playing. When he was breaking head on. And he's still playing well, but not like he was when he was won the world tournament. Two thousand. Was it 2003 he won? Yeah. He was young and eager and, and a lot slimmer. And nerves were better. And he won the tournament that year, the World Tournament. It was a good win for him. He beat me in the quarters and went on the win. I beat, wait a minute, semis maybe, I can't remember exactly. But uh, I beat Davis in that tournament, Steve Davis. I thought he was going to beat me, and he had an easy out, and he missed the ball. <laughs> I beat him 11-9. I thought he was going to beat me. And I thought he was going to win the tournament, the world tournament, and then make us look worse to the snooker players. Oh, we can win the world tournament. We can't win a frame in snooker. So that's what they would have been saying then. But... Fortunately, I, I disposed of uh, Davis that week. But he disposed of me in the Moscone Cup in one year. He beat me in the finals to win it. That was some win for him. But, uh, uh, what, Nils roll, uh, Holman rolled out. Now uh, Nils has got the shot I was just talking about a moment ago where you got to kick the ball and stop it. You want to hit high on this shot, high on the cue ball. Shoot away from the ball a little bit and spin into it, unless he can see the edge of it. And then just shoot it with, with nice speed, not overly hard, and then the cue ball stops there and kicks the ball down to him. I, he hit it poorly. He played, he didn't play far enough away and let it curve like I said you should do. He didn't add that aspect of it in when he shot that one. It's risky, but it's playable. Left, he's gonna roll this in and just roll and shoot the three in the, and come up back over and shoot the three in the same pocket. These guys all shoot shots differently I would have shot that like that, and I thought he might roll and shoot it in the other pocket, but that's the way I would have shot that one that he had, I think. Precisely the way he shot. He's gonna roll up a little and shoot between these seven and the five ball, because that gives him a better shot at pocketing the ball and the same angle to get on the five. He could have took that other angle, but it was too tough. He's gonna stun this a little with left bottom and stun it two rails like that. 
these rails are a little bit bouncy sometimes, but that's still okay. I still like the way they respond. You don't have to overhit. If they had heat on it, this table had a heater in it, it would play beautiful. Right bottom, just stop right there off the eight. Now he'll just stun over. He might go down table and come back with right top. Yep, he did. Check the cue ball off like that. See how he hit that nice and easy and, the, and look how responsive the rail was. Got him back perfect, I like that. Shoot and stop. With a little bit of heat, the rail would calm down a little more and just roll this in, stun it over. Okay, the score is 3-2. Neil still leads, Fan still leads, breaking left bottom. Driving the cue ball to the side rail. And he almost Brooklyn that one and got dead perfect. Huh. Man, I don't understand how these guys break the balls like that and get a shot every time. I guarantee you they won't do it on as sticky tables I watch a lot of times. But anyway, this is perfect here. All he's got to do is shoot right bottom and stun over for the three ball. This is like really elementary shot for Nils right here. I'll just fire it in. Didn't even hit a rail. Good shot. Now he'll draw back. Just missed the six ball. Or he can roll it and check off with right, too. I think that's what he's doing. He stunned it just a little to make it take that angle straight back like that. He didn't hit quite where he wanted to, though. I'd, it, he should just spin lightly two rails and just get for the side or the corner. He can't mess it up or he'll go all the way around three rails. And that was always going to be... It still didn't get away from him. You see that? I know some tables that shot would have got away from me on right there. It would have went all the way to a rail over there. He'd have been dead on the rail over there on our left. He's still all right. He'll just roll it in or stun it with some bottom. He wants to hold, hit it a little harder so it, so he don't doesn't miss it. See, when you shoot those shots, those particular shots right there, a little bit firmer, you don't miss them as much. But if you have to drag that shot and hit it slow, you can miss those a little more. Now he'll just stun the ball a little and go three rails. Maybe just roll it. These rails are real. You know, they'll check the ball real easy. See how it's checking? But at the same time, they're, they're, they're doing it right, correctly. Like I said, if they had a little heat on this table, even a lamp over it that heated it or just heat in it, they'd play absolutely perfect. He'll just set this with straight ball, kind of. Go two rails. Really responsive, this table. Because you, you never try to get that close to the ball. He never even tried to get that close, believe me. He was trying to stay by the sides out there. But these tables are so responsive, you don't... But it still hasn't, like, sabotaged them, like I see a lot of tables do. Sabotage your play. The table does it. Left bottom, Nils Fan leads 4-2. Left side, left bottom, lost the cue ball. Usually that results in no shot, except when Appleton's breaking. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> He'll get a shot every time. The one will be hanging in the corner every time he leaves his cue ball at the, on the rack end. But uh, as you see, Holman's cue, one ball is not hanging in the corner. And now he's got, he does have a safety here. He could kick and just stop that and bank it. It's hard to do. I'm not real good at this one. Uh, the Filipino guys do this shot uh, remarkably good. I've seen some of them uh, pull this off. Efren, I've seen do it. Uh, Bustamante likes this shot. I've seen him do it. He's made some shots on me that make your hair stand up on your head, on your back. But uh, he's going to roll out and then try to do it. I see what he's up to. Because the other way, he was going to lose the cue ball on the other one. This one, he can control the cue ball. Absolutely. 
you almost are scared to let him shoot this shot. When, you, when a guy rolls out on this shot, you're just scared to death of let him shoot it because you think they're going to execute it on you. And if they do, you'll be trapped, that's for sure. He wants to hit it to the bottom rail and let it just stick right there. It'll move just a little, the cue ball, and stick. And a one will go down to the bottom rail and it'll get him. Oh, wow, he tried to make it. Hmm, I don't like that play. He actually tried to make the shot, I think. I wouldn't have played to make that. I would have just stuck it, tried to stick it. Hmm. I don't know if the five ball covered the three ball a little bit to make this a little more interesting for Mills. But it looks like he could draw right into the five and take a little longer shot on the two if the cue ball doesn't get away from him. Pull such a hard game. Just, you're never safe in this game. Left, right, top, just run into those two, I think, lightly. Yeah, that was the right play. Take a little longer shot on the two. This is a tricky shot, too. He doesn't know if he wants to draw it or follow it. Six is like a bowling ball. It's huge, or a beach ball or something. It's in the way, kinda. I think he's gonna draw it though. But if he hits the six, he's dead. He looks like he's following it somehow. He may try to go around the six. The pockets are conducive, he can do it. Yep, he did. A lot of tables, you wouldn't shoot that that way on, but this table, these tables, the pockets are a little bit softer. And he knows that. He'll stop right there. You gotta take that at your advantage to shoot a shot a certain way when you know it. He hit that well though, either way. He pocketed the ball pretty straight in the pocket. It didn't slop in. Right top. And will come two rails, go past the five ball. Just a little bit of right, just to make it come off and go. Oh no, he shot that kind of wrong. I thought he should have went all the way and bounced off. He tried, he could actually could have fitted that right there too. He tried to hit that with speed. That's what you call when you don't go an extra rail, you're trying to hit a shot with speed. But he's still all right, he can just, a little bit of right top and hold it before the nine or go around it. Yep, he held it before the nine. Look how responsive these rails are. It's unreal. Most tables, the cue ball will be frozen on the side rail to his right. That's where it'll be on most tables today, would be frozen on that rail over there or close to it. Look where the cue ball is. It's a full foot and a half off the rail. He'll draw back a little. He can play for the side or the corner and he got for the side. Now he'll put left bottom, draw lightly to the bottom rail, or he'll just draw it out two rails firm. It's lightly draw to the bottom rail. He takes a pretty good lead now, five to two. Nils Fayen leads, breaking from the left side, left bottom. And this guy's always had a good break, look at that. He made two and he only got one back. That's a, a good break there. Yeah, it might not happen in Florida, I'll tell you that. They always make two balls. That's an, an incredible stat, it really is. Has to be dry to do that. He's gonna draw back a little, or stop right there. He's gonna draw back, I think. No, he stopped, yeah. Either one. I can't ever tell, especially with this camera. And there's a little blur on it. It hasn't helped me the whole way. 60 years old, I can't see anything now. No, I'm just kidding. I still see pretty good. He's gonna draw this one though. He'll hit it kind of flat a little bit. Just draw it to the side rail like that. See, there wasn't too much spin on that one. Did you see that? A little bit flat. Good shot. He's hitting the balls well, I'll tell you that. He always plays pretty good though. 
I've never seen, and he, he's good with that jump stick too. He beat me one time. He jumped about 20 times on me in one match and beat me 11 to nine. Like he's gonna go three rails, and he is. He likes the, I, I, you can do a lot of things on these rails, but he went a little bit too far there that time. But he's still okay. He's gonna stun it between the, I think he can draw out of it actually, with a lot of left, right bottom. He can, this is called a touch draw. You're not gonna hit it hard, a lot of bottom and right. Just touch draw it like that, see? Just enough to get that angle to make the seven. He's a very good player, Nils. He plays the right shots. Straight top, back and forth a little bit. Uh-oh, he might have almost overdid that one. But he's all right. He'll just draw it with a lot of left bottom and spin and just a light draw. And it'll, it'll make a sharp angle and go two rails and he'll shoot the nine down there in the left corner pocket. But he's got to be careful that this ball doesn't scratch in the side pocket. I'll tell you that. You wouldn't be afraid of that on most tables, but these rails are so responsive that he has to be scared of that now, a little. Because you gotta dig on this one. You gotta dig, see that, how he dug on it? Most of the time, where that ball hit at, the cue ball would be level with the nine down there. He wouldn't have a shot. But on these rails, he hit, in the, he hit past the right diamond there and still got a shot. I'm gonna roll this in with a little bit of left top. Something sharked him. Pulls one big shark. But they got a nice little arena to play in, looks like. Left top. Just roll it in. Six, two. Nils Fan leads. Thorson Holman breaking from the left side. Left bottom. Doesn't want to lose the cue ball. Doesn't want to foul the break. Well, I think he, I don't know if he, well, he ain't going to let him shoot it anyway. I couldn't tell if three, three balls went back there and he didn't make anything. And how does that Nils make, Nils makes two, three balls every time and he makes nothing. It doesn't even make sense. I still say there's another way to play pool. This is all still luck. No matter how much you win in this, it's still luck. Doesn't justify how good I shoot. That's what. I, mean, I don't get to show how good I shoot. All I'm gonna do is sit there and try to get lucky. He's gonna bank the one back and send the cue ball underneath the seven somehow. Now, he butchered that. For sure, he should have got him there. Somehow. Well, he can roll it and. Just miss the eight with the one and run into the two ball with the cue ball and get him with the six and the eight. That might be there, but it don't look, doesn't look that easy to pull off. It's something kind of funny. Yeah. No, that's no good. He, if he want, if the cue ball would have rolled forward and got behind the six, it would have been perfect. I think he thought that's what was going to happen, and the ball stopped. So this still, the rails outweigh the speed on this table still of the bed. The rails outweigh the bed. You understand what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is a perfect pool table, which doesn't exist, but almost perfect pool table would have the same speed bed as the rails. Okay, and you're not seeing that in pool. I promise you that. Nowhere, really. Nowhere on earth is that going on. But I prefer if the bed is real fast. I mean, super like uh, like it was in Vegas uh, a couple of years ago when we played the U.S. Open. The tables were so f the beds were so fast it was unreal. Then I would like prefer a little bit slower rail, but. I think if you could get the rail to match the speed of the bed, then you got an ideal table. 
and then jack the pockets up or and, and have it where the table can't get wet, but the pockets don't let everything fall in. Got to make it where it's, there's a little bit of a, a guessing game where you're going to make the shot or not. Right bottom, draw two rails. See, he hit that ball a little poorly, but it still is all right, I guess. But I don't know. It's pulls a funny game. It's hard to get the table correct. Promise you that. I don't care how many times you try. R left bottom, draw off the rail. At three in the side. See how that ball didn't take the spin as much. It boinged a little bit. Could see it. And uh, but it still bounces nice. He needed a little more spin on that to get a little straighter. But he's all right. He'll just put some left and go around the four and shoot it in the side or the corner. Shoot it in the side. Now he'll just draw over a little bit. He'll put a little bit of right bottom and just stun over just a little bit. But this is the Billiard Network, the home of Global Pool on YouTube. Like and follow if you enjoy this. I'm Earl Strickland for the Billiard Network. He'll put right bottom, or maybe just straight bottom, and draw off the rail. Doesn't want the cue ball to do, wants it to come off straight. Like that, see? So that it creates that little bit of angle he's got right there. So, we're often not hitting a lot of spin, even though it looks like it sometimes. We get a lot of shots flat. He'll put straight top or a little bit of right and come back down the table like that. Yes, he put a little bit of right on that one. These rails, now a lot of tables you can't do that. You might, you might draw that around because it might not even bounce back. It'll reverse. The ball doesn't reverse much off these rails with top. I like that. Straight top here. Just make it come straight back down the table. See how he hit it straight. Now that one took off on him, I'll tell you that but still did not sabotage him completely. So it's amazing how smooth he's hitting these shots. He's not over hitting them and the ball's going a long ways. I like it. If they had a little heat on them, oh, it'd be perfect. Left bottom and draw away from the side. There you go. Nils takes a commanding lead, seven to two. Thorsten Holman to break, left side. No nils to break, left side, left bottom, drawing the cue ball to the side rail. This guy makes balls, pull balls on the break no matter how he hits them, seems like. Look at that, they all go straight in, it's unreal. Wow, I could win too, if I could break like that. That's crazy. So that makes it eight, two, We gotta play some other way where he's gotta beat me shooting, not just breaking the balls, jumping over them and getting good rolls. But he's played well here, not uh, defeating anything about the way he played. He's played well, but still, it doesn't seem competitive to me. As competitive as some other way to play. Holman to break. I thought he was. I guess it's 7-2, okay. I must have lost, miscounted somewhere there somehow. Left bottom. Oh, he did it too, look at that. That's amazing. He just did this, he, he repeated his break. I'd have never seen that. He made five balls on the break. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, you won't see that nowhere in this hemisphere that I'm in, I'll tell you that. Uh, 100 degrees outside, 98% humidity. And my table's in a basement. You're lucky if you ever make a ball in a break in 30 breaks. These guys are making five balls in one break. <laughs> uh, there's something different about this table versus mine, I'll tell you that. And, and Everywhere you go in this country and play tournaments, the tables are, are, are uh, not conducive at all, most of the time. Turning stone in the wintertime, it can get conducive, but 
and, the, and then the matchroom events. 7-2, left side, left bottom. There it is again, a gimme, a gimme out again. If I could break like that and get a decent shot like that right there, I would play good too. I think I would. I'd play better, that's for sure. I'd have a lot more confidence if I knew I could break well and, and get a shot and, and be more competitive with the other player, but that's not the way it is. That's why I want to change things. <laughs> a little bit of right top, just roll this in lightly. You just have to hit it too hard because the rail is going to help him a lot. And it helped him more than he wanted. And he, he came out all right. It's funny how he's almost over hit, but he didn't do it, not once. But he almost did. So that, that proves that this table is dry. Because if it was any wetter than it is, he would have missed position several times. He's going to stop right there. I think he can hold it right there with bottom and then let's keep that little angle. Yep, perfect. Now he'll stun back out for the seven in the same corner he shot the four. That's what he should do. Now these guys play these a lot different than I do there. But Nils is, is, is a bit older. And some of the younger guys on the, on the tour now, and, and so is Thorsten. So they play shots more like I do. As you get older, you'll play the shots differently. He'll roll this with left. Just roll it in like that with left. And this, Nils is the only guy I've ever seen that keeps the stick way out to the right. Yeah, eight. Eight, they, they changed the score. I didn't see it before. It's eight, three now. And this is the end. There it is. Nils wins 9 to 3 over Thorsten Holman. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the Billiard Network for more great pool action from around the world. I'm Earl Strickland saying goodbye. <laughs>